Good morning, it's Monday the 13th of February and welcome to our regular Monday morning roundup of the coming week's economic highlights. As always, we'll start with a quick rundown of the key economic numbers being issued this week around the world's markets. We'll then dive into some of the more significant highlights afterwards with our own thoughts and analysis. So as always, let's get straight to it. So the economic numbers being issued this week start today with an update on Japanese GDP. On Tuesday, we hear an update on UK's unemployment status and also the week's key data metrics start with GDP in the Eurozone and an inflation update in the US. And both of those we'll discuss in more detail afterwards. We'll also discuss the inflation figures due out on Wednesday for the UK, as well as the update on retail sales in the US. Also on Wednesday, Germany announces its latest PPIs and we'll also get the week's petroleum status update. On Thursday, we'll hear the latest unemployment data from Australia, the housing starts in the US, and PPIs and initial jobless claims also over in the US. And to wrap up the week's key figures, the UK updates its latest retail sales figures. It's another key metric that we'll talk about shortly. And the companies that we'll hear trading updates from this week start today with DBS Group and Michelin. On Tuesday, Airbnb released their Q4 earnings, and that's something that we'll give our thoughts on afterwards. Tuesday also sees announcements from Coca-Cola and Marriott International. And UK bank earnings reports start on Wednesday with Barclays, and we'll take a look at them in more detail in a moment. Results also on Wednesday are from Dunelm, Cisco, Shopify, Glencore, Heineken, Kraft Heinz and AIG. Standard Chartered report Q4 results on Thursday. That's another bank that we'll be discussing in today's video in more depth. Thursday also sees releases from Money Supermarket, Nestle, Airbus, Dropbox and Hasbro. And finally on Friday, UK bank earnings continue with NatWest reporting their Q4s. And again, we'll be giving our thoughts on this towards the end of today's video. And Friday finishes off also with results from DraftKings, Hermes and Deer & Company. Well, two weeks ago, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank and the Fed announced their interest rate decisions. Well, last week, investors continued to digest those meetings, as well as plenty of speeches from policymakers. While US and German stocks sold off across the week, the FTSE powered ahead to an all-time high. This week, attention will be on inflation data from the US and the UK, both of which should provide further insight into the pace at which inflation is cooling. Earnings season continues in the US and ramps up in the UK with banks under the spotlight. And the Bank of Japan's governor is also expected to be announced and could help boost the yen if the chosen candidate is known for a less dovish stance. So let's take a look at this week's bigger stories in more detail. On Tuesday, the Eurozone is due to announce its Q4 GDP data. Well, Eurozone recession fears are easing and the bloc is expected to have avoided contraction Q4 after the first Q4 GDP reading posted a surprise expansion of 0.1% quarter on quarter, which came after a 0.3% Q on Q rise in Q3. Expectations are for an upward revision to 0.2% in Q4 as energy prices fall and inflation starts to cool. So as a result, do keep an eye this week on the euro and the DAX. The US are due to update the market on their latest inflation data, also on Tuesday. Well, CPI fell to its lowest level in more than a year in December, dropping to 6.5%, down from 7.1% in November. Expectations are for consumer prices to fall for a seventh straight month to 6.2% year-on-year. Core inflation is also forecast to decline to 5.5% year-on-year in January. That's down from 5.7% in December and a peak of 6.6% in September. Cooling inflation supports the view that the Fed could be nearing the end of the hiking cycle, although rates will likely remain high for some time. With, um, sorry, while Fed Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that the disinflationary process has started, he also warned that there was a long way to go, particularly in light of January's strong jobs report. And finally on Tuesday, Airbnb are due to announce Q4 earnings. In the previous quarter, Airbnb posted its most profitable period ever. 
However, with bookings growth slowing and supply growth also trending southward, Airbnb could start to lose that momentum in this quarter. Wall Street is expecting gross booking value to increase 20% from last year to $13.5 billion. Bookings are also expected to rise 23% to $90.1 million, and revenue forecasts to rise 21% to $1.86 billion. Finally, expectations are for adjusted EBITDA to jump 30% to $434.7 million. Now, while these figures look impressive compared to the previous year, they are a significant slowdown from previous quarters. Attention will also be on the outlook, which will be scrutinized amidst concerns of a recession in the coming quarters. The share price trades up 27% so far this year, but trades down 35% across the past 12 months. Wednesday sees the release of UK CPIs. While UK inflation cooled to 10.5% year on year in December, that's down from 10.7% annually in November and a peak of 11.1% in October. Inflation is cooling, however, the pace is painstakingly slow and core inflation is proving to be stickier than initially expected. Core inflation was unchanged in December at 6.3%, partly due to solid wage growth, which suggests that high inflation could persist although that doesn't necessarily mean that there will be more rate hikes. The Bank of England expects the pace at which inflation cools to pick up from mid-2023 uh, mid and is expected to fall to 4% by the end of the year. Hotter than expected inflation could, of course, lift the pound. US retail sales fell 1.1% in December, marking the biggest monthly fall in every year. The data was somewhat surprising given how resilient the jobs market has proved to be. Still, it did raise some concerns that the economy was losing momentum or that consumers were becoming more cautious amidst rising economic insecurity. However, those concerns could be short-lived as sales are expected to rebound 1.4% month on month in January, which along with January's blowout jobs report could heighten inflationary fears. And Barclays kicks off the UK bank's earnings season on Wednesday and comes after a string of positive earnings from European banks. The prospect of higher rates for longer and an improving outlook for growth, the NIESR forecast 0.2% growth in 2023, could be tailwinds for the sector. Net interest income expected to rise over 38% this quarter, benefiting from improved margins thanks to higher interest rates. Fixed income could be a notable outperformer. Pre-tax profits are expected to fall 2.5% in Q4 to £1.4 billion amidst rising costs. The share price trades 17% higher in 2023 at £1.92. Goldman Sachs raised its target price to £2.85. Standard Chartered is set to release Q4 earnings on Thursday as the share price hits a four-year high. Amidst reports that the first Abu Dhabi bank could renew its offer of $35 billion for the Asian-focused bank. Standard Chartered is expected to show that the net interest margin could rise to 1.5% in the final quarter of 2022. Pressures on the bank to cut costs are rising. Costs are expected to rise some 3.5% in 2023. Underlying pre-tax profits of $784.1 million in Q4, which could result in a 24% rise in annual earnings to $4.8 billion. And finally, on Friday, NatWest are due to report Q4 results. Well, the bank's share price fell to a seven-month low in October following its Q3 results, which revealed an unexpected increase in bad loan provisions. Those worries proved short-lived, and the share price had rebounded over 40% to a nine-month high as recession fears eased. Expectations are for the high street lender to reveal an increase in net interest income to £3 billion. That's up from £2.6 billion in Q3. And this would take the annualised rate to £12 billion. And that's up from £7.6 billion posted in 2021. Consensus estimates are for Q4 profits of £1.36 billion and £4.95 billion for the full year. So those are the big stories of the week. Let's wrap up with a quick look at the dividend announcements due out this week. In the FTSE 100, we'll hear from Imperial Brands, Pershing Square Holdings, Shell and BP. And in the FTSE 250, we'll hear from Murray Income Trust, ICG Enterprise Trust, NCC Group, LXI Wright, Tritax Eurobox and Next Energy Solar Fund. 
So there you have it. It's a busy week for key metrics, which should give us an updated clue of which way the inflationary barometer is pointing. One senses we are approaching a bit of a nexus point. Central banks appear as confident as ever, forecasting which direction the inflationary super tanker is heading. And they've doubled down on their forecast, committing their interest rate commands to steer that inflationary super tanker accordingly. The question is how choppy those seas are ahead and have those rudder commands steered the right course between those approaching rocks? Well, the market is currently full of backseat captains predicting a whole range of potential courses, including a peak still yet to be reached through to imminent deflation. Well, the variety of which actually more conforms, confirms we are indeed at a nexus point rather than heading in, in any clear direction yet. But if you're in need of quality advice from seasoned and experienced market farers in such times of uncertainty, it could be worth your while just giving us a call here at Atlantic Capital Markets. We'd love to hear from you. But in the meantime, don't forget you can always try our app, delivering you our award-winning trading signals, which are, of course, free to receive and to use. Aside from that, thanks as always for watching, and don't forget to click on that subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss out on our regular financial updates with our expert market analysis and our opinions. So until next time, from all of us here at Atlantic Capital Markets, have yourself a great week.